Combat is your art, and mastering the medium is essential to becoming an Absolver. Upon arriving in Adal, all prospects have a core combat style and an initial combat deck. On their path to absolution, prospects will learn new possibilities and mix them to create their own unique method of fighting. One of three combat styles are chosen at the beginning of your journey, but other styles exist in the world of Absolver. Each combat style improves specific character attributes and comes with its own unique special ability. Balanced and powerful, with the Forsaken style, prospects can parry enemy attacks, briefly stunning their opponent. Strong and resistant, practitioners of the cult method can absorb hits without being stunned or pushed back and regain lost health if the counter-attack is successful. The students of the Windfall combat style will have greater dexterity and will. They can avoid enemy attacks, leaving the enemies open to a powerful counter. The combat deck is the list of attacks that a prospect can use when fighting. These attacks are divided between four different stances, which represent the prospect's orientation relative to their target. In each stance, different attacks are available. Some attacks will naturally flow from one stance to another. Other attacks will stay in the same stance. Regardless, each move will always chain fluidly with one another, effortlessly shifting from stance to stance without interruption. The combat deck is fully customizable, allowing one to define their way of fighting and become unpredictable. In each of the four stances, prospects will choose a sequence of attacks and an alternative attack. Alternative attacks can be used at any time to break a sequence and bring the prospect in another stance. Both sequences and alternative attacks can be chained fluidly without interruption. To give more possibilities, new attacks can be unlocked by fighting against any kind of opponent, from the newest prospect to the strongest absolver. Besides this, Prospects can learn other combat styles by choosing a mentor and staying loyal to him or her. Prospects can choose mentors as they meet in the world. Through their loyalty, prospects can learn additional combat styles and use their mentor's combat deck. Steal yourself, dear prospect. Combat instincts may come natural, but refining your combat style and combat deck is key to both basic survival and victory in the lost lands of Adal. Hi, my name is Pierre Tarnot. I'm creative director on Absolver and we're about to see some exclusive Absolver gameplay. So Absolver is an online action game with a focus on a very simple but accessible melee combat system. So the combat in Absolver is inspired by actual martial arts and we wanted to create a system that was deep but accessible and in which players could create their own custom combat choreographies. What we're seeing here is a tutorial is a tutorial map in the game. It's so it's very early stage. The player has not been matchmaked with other players yet. The main part of the game is set in a small open world that is made of a dozen internet interconnected zones that the players can explore freely and in which he is he or she is matchmaked with other players seamlessly. 
So as you explore the world, you will get to meet other people and build relationships with them. You can make friends, enemies, you can find mentors or students. A variety of relationships exist. And as we see here, sometimes you'll be walking in the world and suddenly somebody else is there. This, however, is a, is a single player tutorial because it's there to teach the player the basic game mechanics. So we wanted to do um, a combat system that is pretty accessible, so it's easy to pick up and play. Uh, it's a 3D real-time real -time combat system. But we added enough layers of depth, as we'll see, to have an actual competitive PvP experience. Because the end game of Absolver is becoming the best Absolver and fighting other others like you in PvP. So here we see that the special defense of that character. Uh, the char in Absolver, every player can choose a combat style, and each style has a different special ability. The combat style, this combat style, has the parry ability, so the character is about to parry, is able to parry attacks if he does it in the right timing, which I kind of messed up here. Uh, but we'll see it a bit later on. So that's one mechanic. Another which we saw earlier is what we call perfect attacks. So when you nail your attacks, your successive attacks in the right timing, the character will flash golden, which makes the attack chain faster and stun the enemy a bit longer. So that's what we're seeing here. It's really an incentive to, to be in the flow of combat. Another game mechanic we're seeing here is the phase, which is cancelling the build-up of an attack to trick your opponent into doing a feint. So that's this black ghost we can see at times. So this is especially useful against human opponents. If you feint, you get into this high-level mind game, kind of tricking your opponent into do doing a dodge or a parry and that allows you to follow up really quickly with another attack while your enemy is recovering so that's um, once you kind of get to know the attacks of your opponent that is something that is very important to um, to tackle so now we're going to see something that is really the core of Absolver which is the stances and the combat deck edition the idea is in Absolver you have four different stances uh, represented by uh, this diamond in each stance you have a sequence of up to three attacks which which you see on top an alternative attack which you see down the idea is that every stance starts in one stance and goes into another one so for instance here we're going to make a sequence of attack that starts front left and that finishes front left I can go into training mode and I'm gonna see that if I chain these moves and I keep attacking, they loop on themselves. But I could go ahead and change that and, and decide that one stance actually goes to a different stance. Here, my two front stances both loop on themselves. But the idea is that any attack always chains smoothly with the attacks that follow. So everything is everything is fluid everything is dynamic and the action basically never stops the same system works with weapons so the player can pull out weapons as temporary bonuses and when you take out a weapon it's just a whole different combat deck that is now accessible to you weapons do more damages so but they can be temporary disarmed they can bonuses you can get disarmed as we just saw here. So pulling a weapon in combat uh, usually gives an advantage to the player but can also be dangerous if your enemy gets very offensive, disarms you and picks up your weapon. So now we're going to see another part of, um, of the game. Which is a bit later, we were changing characters and we're going to focus now on the attack learning system, which is the core of how you will create your characters in Absolver. So in Absolver, as you explore the game world, you'll meet other enemies, whether they're NPCs or players. And when you fight somebody, whether it's an NPC or player, they attack you with an attack that you don't know, you'll learn that attack aggressively.
which is what we're seeing here. Here I'm using the Absorb ability, which allows me to avoid being stunned or pushed back by an attack, and that allows me to counterattack right away. So I do receive damages, but if I counterattack, my damages are mitigated. And if, when I absorb, when I use my special ability on, a, on an attack, I'm going to learn it faster. So here I see that I've learned a bit out of six attacks. And as you fight different enemies, you will progressively learn more and more attacks. And what you want to do is sometimes you don't want to beat an NPC right away, but rather try and use your special ability tactically on that NPC in order to learn their moves better. Another mechanic this ties on is a social relationship with your mentor students. So what you can do when you meet another another player is ask them to become your mentor. That way, that player will be able to teach you their combat style and you'll be able to learn attacks faster than you would by fighting regular enemies. So here I'm trying to absorb the enemy's attack, not to kill it right away. There we go. I've learned some of three different attacks. Now this character here seems a bit more dangerous, so I guess I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be careful in the early stages of combat. Valid tactic is to kind of get to know the moves your, of your opponents, and that way you'll be able to counter the opponent more efficiently. This enemy has a combat style that has avoid a special ability. So the, my enemy can sidestep, duck under my attacks, he cannot parry ups or, or absorb, but he can certainly make these very short and, and fluid avoidance moves that allows them to follow up really fast and attack me. Every time my attack is a bit too predictable, the enemy uh, ducks under it. So I've got to be careful here, maybe get some feints in, in order to get the edge in combat. Here I'm taking another stand, my back stand, Know that I have a low attack that allows me to beat that enemy. The enemy hasn't picked up my sword, so I can go go ahead pick up that sword. My health is pretty low, so I'm gonna heal up and keep on exploring that zone. So we're not going to show too much of that zone here, but we want before we jump to PvP, we wanted to show a bit of the customization system of Absolver. The general principle is that Every gear, every piece of equipment, and we've got nine different equipment categories in Absolver, every piece of equipment has specific par parameters of weight and protection. And so you're kind of making that trade-off between a weight that slows you down and protects you, protection that, uh, that gives you, mitigates damages, and sometimes uh, gear protects you better against blunt damage, sometimes gear protects you better against cut damage, which is typically the damage that you players get from weapons. So you're making these trade-offs as you equip, and all these equipment categories are fully compatible, so you're making gameplay choices as well as aesthetic choice, because the look of your character pretty much determines how others will perceive you and so it's um, important in an online game to kind of create your persona and show others what your character represents. Okay, so now what we're going to see is some player versus player combat. What's important to note is there are two forms of combat in the game. Either what we're seeing here, which is players match made together in the world, and these players have decided to fight, but these players could actually have teamed up and, uh, and go on into co-op PvE instead of fighting. But they chose to fight, and so here they are fighting. So we're going to see different moments of a vari variety of fights, and look at the tactics involved. This was this was an earthquake tower. What we can see are the the floating shards in the back of the characters allow them to use special weapons and powers. So you need shards to put out your weapon, but you can also use the shard to create a shockwave or other thing. 
So when, when confronted with an enemy who is a weapon, the good tactic is to be very offensive in order to try and disarm him, but that's not always possible. So we have two categories of weapons, this here are the war gloves, the character can change on the fly between war gloves and swords, and as you can see, he can also get disarmed again, and my opponent can pick up his weapon. As we saw previously, it's very important to stay focused and keep these perfect attacks that make your character flesh golden because that's how you get a faster edge in combat. Even though the moves that can be placed in the combat deck all belong to different combat styles, characters can choose to put in their combat deck moves of any style. So you can create something which is a mixed, a mixed style based on different attacks. Some attacks also have different properties. These attacks that can do blue can absorb attacks. Some attacks can avoid. Some attacks can interrupt. That was a nice parry done here, followed by a guard break attack. This is a guard break attack again. You see the character's hand flashing red, and he is done. Pick up his war gloves, absorbing a few attacks, and then jumping right in. But the other enemy has pulled out a weapon, and so the odds have shifted again. This is a Moonpike sword, it's a very fragile sword, so it can break pretty easily, but it inflicts heavy cut damage. But the opponent has pushed me back with a shockwave. Here we see a good use of the absorb power. Sometimes the fight takes place uh, near cliffs or precipices, and this creates a combat modifier because you, you cannot dodge in that direction. Some PvP max exclusively focus on dangerous environments in which players may fall. That was a weapon break, followed up by a big absorb haymaker punch. That finishes up the enemy. So even if an enemy is dominating, as we can see here, if with a succession of absorbs, you can always chain your attacks faster, and if the enemy makes just one mistake, um, you can always uh, follow up and pick up in combat. The altar here is red because Characters cannot interact with an altar when a fight is going on. And there we go. Weapon is picked up. And now the odds have shifted. It's very important to be able to use your special ability in the right timing. This is a move inspired by Capoeira. It's a very powerful kick. He pushes me away. So this will finish it that way. So what we see here are combats that take place in the worlds. But, as mentioned previously, some combats take place into dedicated PvP arenas. So, from the game world, the player will be able to access special PvP game modes. So there is of course the one versus one duel, which currently is, is a best of five mechanic. But there is also three versus three game modes. And this concludes our demo. Thanks for watching.
SpaceX show floor. Cool. Um, so if anybody sees this, you can try it. Um, so we, this is the exploration part of the of the game where you um, where you are in a it's a small open world. It's the ruins of a fallen city in which um, you're seamlessly matchmaked with other players as you explore. This current demo here we're seeing, it's, a, it's the earliest part of the game, so it's a single player t tutorial. And so we won't see any social relationships in here. Okay. Um, so we've chosen a character with a specific combat style because in the game you can, you can have different combat styles that you learn as you progress. And um, so this character has this combat style which is uh, inspired by Kung Fu. And each combat style has a special ability, so this one you can avoid enemy attacks. So here we see um, core um, real-time combat gameplay um, against, uh, against an NPC. So we wanted to make a combat system that's... One of our taglines was um, combat is a dance and movement is your weapon. So we oh, wanted cool. something that's really physical and strong and impactful. How many different, uh, uh, I guess I'd say, martial arts styles did you research and look into when you were putting this all together? Quite a few. In the game, we're going to have three main combat styles plus one secret one that you can unlock in the game, which we're not discussing uh, currently. Okay. That's a, that's a little surprise we're keeping for, uh, for later on. And um, that one just turns it into a first-person shooter, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the plan. <laughs> and, um, and so as you're... Um, as you're exploring, you'll be, you'll be fighting NPCs. You'll be um, basically discovering what you're doing this, what it means to become an absolver, which is your main objective. And uh, you'll come to question these objectives as you progress. Um, so you've got a really intricate combat system here uh, where yeah. you actually, there, there's some predetermination going. Um, just one thing we're going to see here is a core game mechanic, which we call flowing attacks. The idea is that you want to attack in the right timing to chain your attacks faster to stun your enemy for longer. That's when you ah. see the character flashing gold. And so that means that even in the, in the full pressure of the action, you've got to stay focused, you've got to stay in the, in the right rhythm for, uh, to reach maximum efficiency. That's cool. It feels so, almost like spiritual, for lack of a better word. Yeah, well, we're trying to have something that's, you know, not like... Uh, bun mashy a frenetic, but we want it to be uh, a, a pace, which is still very intense, but you mustn't rush things. must be, uh, you know, in accordance with your movement and the flow of your movements. Cool. And uh, we just saw here the special ability of this character, which is the avoid. This is a quick tutorial that we're showing. And final thing is, we're, you, you see these little two stones glowing in my back? It's, yeah. um, this is what we call tension shards. They fill up during combat and they allow you to use special powers, special abilities, and, um, and to draw weapons uh, during combat. So weapons are like a temporary bonus that you can use um, when your tension shards are, are glowing. We're gonna see weapons a bit further down the road. Okay. Um, and so this, um, I'm not gonna go too deep in the narrative of, uh, of the game because it's, um, it's uh, the story blends uh, single player and multiplayer, so uh, you can you know you can run through the game yeah. without being connected, but you'll be missing on the social yeah. focusing to make sure that the gameplay feels right even in real network conditions. Cool. Yeah, this feel this combat system is just so different than anything I've ever seen before. You guys are really it feels like you're putting so much care into every frame of animation here. Oh yeah, this is. All the animations here are keyframed. We've got very talented animators in the team, and I think the least exper all of them have like extensive martial arts experience. Oh. And I think the one who did the least had, did like practice karate for like six or seven years. That's got to be a <laughs> really small Venn diagram yeah. of skilled animators. <laughs> or combat. So, Ooh. which that's what we haven't discussed it yet. But the idea is when you're in combat, any time. You can change stances by holding R2 and moving okay. the right stick. So you've got four different stances to choose from. And depending on your stance, you've got one sequence of attack and an alternative attack. And all these attacks can be customized in that interface, which we called the combat deck. So as you explore, as you meet people, as you fight other people, as you find mentors, you'll learn new attacks, which you can use in your combat deck. Okay, so this and a deck as in like a card deck. 
as a card deck, but you're basically between combats, you're preparing your strategy and the moves that you'll be able to use in real-time combat. Huh. The idea is that one attack uh, can send you in a different stance. So when I'm building a sequence of attack, it can either loop on itself or send me in a different stance. Okay. And all the moves chain together really smoothly. So players basically build their own combat system. Yeah, exactly. So the idea is that eventually um, players have really have their unique uh, setup and combat style. Huh. And, uh, and you know, this is, um, this is what you're doing in combat. It's learning what moves your opponent are to be able to react and counterattack, etc. So is this kind of this is really a beautiful game? Where did you guys draw the inspiration for the overall aesthetic? Well, we wanted to do um, something which was um, stylized, but still had realistic human proportions, and we thought that you know it fits our gameplay, which is really about the essence of movement. So we didn't want to have too many things that distract you from that. Okay. But uh, while still you know having um, enough details to um, to have quite of a rich environment, and cool. so this is why you know we've got realistic shapes, but stylized textures and animations are also a bit um, you know um, not exaggerated, but yeah, stylized I guess is for lack of a better word. So the idea is that. As you, as you expl to show uh, the character customization aspect oh, wow. of the game, so all your gear has impact on, uh, on gameplay properties. So you've got weight ratios, uh, defense parameters, which uh, in turn impact um, how efficiently you're going to use the attacks that you've placed in your combat deck. Okay. And this is, for us, it's also important because this is what, what you'll be showing to others in game. And so if I choose a math like this one, which is maybe a bit aggressive, uh, and you meet me, uh, you're going to get a different impression. You're going your to tell yourself a different story about, okay, this is probably a bad dude. He's going to try to attack me. Is or there a mask that's just a big smiley face so I can be very welcoming to people? Uh, we, we characters doing feints, flowing attacks. Uh, there's a disarm mechanic. So here I've just um, picked the weapon of my opponent to hit him with it. Oh, cool. Um, this was an avoid, avoid, which is one of the special abilities here. And this is the uh, match-made PvP that we're looking yeah, at? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you can fight players in the game, but if you want to do like a best of five actual game mode, you're going to want to go into a dedicated PvP game mode. Awesome. So we've got one versus one game modes, and we've got three versus three uh, more objective-based uh, game modes. Oh, cool. So you, you'll be wanting to you know, make friends in the game as you're exploring, build a team, and go into uh, dedicated PvP game modes with them. Cool.